Now we will discuss the role of pancreas in the food metabolism. Pancreas, pancreas as you know, is a mixed organ. It's considered endocrine as well as exocrine. We mean that pancreas produces enzymes as well as hormones. We we'll see the hormones which are produced by the pancreas. And you see here the location of the pancreas. Uh, pancreas has a very important role in the food metabolism. All elements, carbohydrate, uh, lipids, and proteins. The secretion of the hormones by the pancreas is stimulated by food intake as well as by gastrointestinal hormones. The food as well as the hormones are released into the portal vein, transported into the liver, then the hormones affect mainly insulin and glucagon, the metabolism of the food. After the food metabolized in the liver, then transported into the peripheral tissues. Then these substrates feed back with the pancreatic, pancreatic iris to modulate the secretion of the pancreatic hormones, mainly insulin and Glucose. Now we will see that hormones produced by the pancreas by cells called islet of Langerhans or Langerhans islets. These are the types of the cells in the Langerhans islets. Alpha cells, 20 percent, these cells they produce glucose. Beta cells they produce insulin and amylin, 75 percent. Delta cells they 3 to 5 percent, so much again. And epsilon cells they produce less than uh, granin, which they are about less than 1 percent, as well as less than 2 percent F cells, pancreatic. Pancreatic eyes of Lagrange comprise 1 to 2 percent of the mass of the pancreas and are scattered throughout the organ. Preclinical data indicate that amylin, which is produced along with the insulin, acts as neuroendocrine hormone that complement the action of insulin in postprandial glucose homeostasis. There are several mechanisms. This includes suppression of postprandial glucagon secretion and slowing of the rate at which nutrients are delivered from the stomach to the small intestine for absorption. This figure give us an idea about the structure of insulin. Here, the pro-insulin. Insulin is connected with the C-peptide. Insulin is composed of two chains, A chain, 21 amino acid, and B chain, 30 amino acid. B chain is the active uh, chain. And here the pro-insulin connected with the uh, insulin. You see that two chains of the insulin are connected with the other by bridges, that survive bridges. And also there is a bridge in a chain. We don't know the function of this bridge. When the insulin is secreted 
along with their sleep tight in their secretary granules. And their secret tight and insulin are packed in granules and secreted in equivalent molar amounts, along with a small amount of pro insulin. These points are very important. First, in vivo, pro insulin has biologic potency that is only about 10% of that of insulin. Second, it is of clinically significant that insulin and C peptide are secreted in equal amounts. Three, 50 to 60 percent of the insulin produced by the pancreas is extracted by the liver without ever reaching the systemic circulation. In contrast, the liver doesn't extract C peptide. Because C peptide is secreted in equimolar concentrations with insulin and is not extracted by the liver or beta cell, insulin secretion rate can be calculated. Another advantage of measuring C peptide is that standard insulin radio immunoassay does not distinguish between endogenous and exogenous insulin making it an ineffective measure of indigenous B cell function in an insulin-treated diabetic patient. Glucose level must be maintained normal. And there are hormones that control the level of glucose in the blood. Insulin and glucagon provide short-term regulation of plasma glucose level, minute by minute. Other hormones involved in the regulation of plasma glucose. Insulin and glucagon play a pivotal role in the fine regulation of plasma glucose levels. Indeed, Insulin is the only hormone capable of lowering plasma glucose and glucagon is the most important hyperglycemic hormone. Nevertheless, a number of other agents also contribute to the maintenance of stable blood glucose as well as mobilizing glucose when necessary. These hormones including include adrenal corticosteroid, growth hormone, catecholamines, and thyroid hormones. This figure gives us an idea about the summary of glucose counter regulatory controls and the effect of the glucagon, epinephrine, cortisol, and growth hormone. Now we see the role of glucagon in gluconeogenesis, in gluconeogenesis, gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, and inhibition of glucose uptake. You see, glucagon has a role just in the case two: glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. Epinephrine, as you see, has a role in glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, and lipolysis. Cortisol has a role in gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, and inhibition of glucose uptake. Also, growth hormone has similar effects such as cortisol in gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, and inhibition of glucose uptake. And then this is that uh, glucose counter regulatory control. Now we'll see how does the insulin function and we'll have an idea about the structure of the receptor of insulin. You remember that insulin two chains and also, now we will have an idea about the receptor of insulin. The receptor of insulin is composed of four subunits, two alpha and two beta. 
They are connected with, the, with each other by disulfide bridges. The alpha, the alpha is with beta and the alpha with, with each other. Once the insulin binds with the alpha, this binding transmitted through beta to the tyrosine kinase. You see that the two alpha are on the cell membrane while the two beta, beta penetrate the cell membrane. The, usually the second messenger in the end of the beta are inactive, but when insulin binds with alpha and this binding transmitted into the second messengers, tyrosine, tyrosine kinase, tyrosine kinase activated, then possible relation of enzyme and the insulin begin to function. And this, the, these are the functions of insulin. First, glucose transport, activation of the glucose transporter for the entry of glucose into cells, the role of protein in protein synthesis, also plays a role in fat synthesis, in glucose synthesis, and in growth and gene expression. And then this is the idea about the the structure of insulin receptors and the production of the second messenger, the tyrosine kinase, and the idea about the general functions of the insulin, beginning with the activation of the glucose transporters. Also, insulin produces the other, if you remember, two second messengers, in its dose triphosphate and glycerol. Most probably that these two second messengers, they play a role in the entry of amino acids, I will add this mineral, potassium, phosphate and magnesium. And from this figure, you can understand the role of insulin in growth. You remember we said that growth hormone and insulin, they synergize so as to cause the growth. These are the factors affecting insulin secretion. There are stimulatory factors and inhibitory factors. For sure, you know that the first factor affecting the insulin secretion increased blood glucose level. Then of course, now you understand that amino acids, they play a role in the secretion of the insulin. Also increase fatty acid and keto acid concentration. Glucagon, because you know that glucagon, the most potent hyperglycemic hormone. When glucose increases, then uh, insulin also increases. Growth hormone, also you remember the growth hormone in the uh, plasma glucose level, level as well as cortisol. Gastric inhibitory peptide also plays a role, potassium, vagal stimulation, and this is sulfonyl urea drug, this is drug we'll, maybe we'll talk about it later, and obesity. But the most important of this uh, stimulatory factor is the glucose. Glucose, the most important factor to stimulate insulin, but it has to be metabolized before it stimulates the insulin secretion. Inhibitory factors, you know, decrease blood glucose level, fasting, exercise, somatostatin, alpha adrenergic agonist, the diazocyte, and leptin. This is hormone produced by the lipids. Basic mechanism of glucose stimulation of insulin secreted by the beta cells of the pancreas and this is the activation of glucose transport. Just now we said the most important stimulus for the, uh, for the insulin secretion is the 
uh, glucose. <coughs> you see, glucose metabolizes. ATP increases. Potassium channels it close. Depolarization increasing calcium. Then the insulin secretion. You remember the release of acetylcholine uh, from the nerve ending, almost similar mechanism. You see here, you see platinum glucose concentration and insulin secretion. At platinum levels less than 50 mg, little or no insulin is secreted. You see, when platinum glucose level is too low, almost no insulin is secreted. Whereas the response is maximal at plasma levels greater than 300, as you see. But I think the increase in the level of insulin secretion stops at level 500 mg per 100 ml plasma. You, you see, just to remind you about the down regulation, the down regulation the number of the receptors for the insulin decreases as well as the affinity of the receptors for insulin also decreases. Therefore, the insulin level in the tower regulation higher than control. This patient needs more insulin so as to produce the glucose to the normal level because of the low number in, of the receptors as well as the uh, low affinity for the hormone, which we call it diabetes 2, diabetes mellitus 2, because of the obesity, most probably.